好了好了，我今天很忙啊，不谈了，我要去买去口袋的东西。先生很冷呢，你要记得带多一点衣服哦。会的会的。出个人哦。出个人呀。在约是见他的公司，他们要我早点过去。那现在怎么样？我们下次再去口袋喽。你们的去吧。新加坡来的对吗？你是谁？我叫群，是你的导游先生。操！설연휴내내여러분들이랑같이있을생각하니까저는벌써부터좀레이피곤하네요。我是说，很高兴可以跟你们一起过新年。阿姨，你一个人来旅游，好勇敢呐！你儿子不担心呐？那有啥可担心的？咱们二十个多人一起陪着阿姨呢。西瓜甜不甜？甜。한명이비는데요뭐싱가포르아줌마누구좀할줄아냐전화걸사람있나한번물어봐你好。你阿我冇认识阿苗，你算嘛？有咩哦 ？I Singapore, I can speak Korea. 안녕하세요감사합니다사랑해요。有대표님귀에들어가면절대로안돼요。내가해결할게。孩子小的时候比较需要父母。你把时间都花在他们身上，后悔吗？现在完全不关注他吧。Um, Korean drama was something that was more of a phenomenon, maybe I want to say like eight years ago. It was a very recent thing. <clears throat> When I was growing up, I watched a lot of Hong Kong dramas.、Um, at some point in the nineties, Japanese drama were huge.、Um, So Korean drama was like a, it was a new thing, very young. But it, you know, it's it's sort of grown so much,、um, the kind of influence it has,、um, and and I I kind of have to force myself to like a lot of the Korean dramas that my mom watched, which is a very particular kind about families, very Confucius sort of、uh, values in them. So those were the kind that my mom watched. And she doesn't really like the zombie dramas. She's not a fan of those. Yeah. Has has she been watching much Squid Game, or did she see Parasite? She, she loved both. She loved Squid Game. She when she finished, she was like, "This is too violent for me." <laughs> so,、um, but she enjoyed. And、Squid、she、Game. said this after eight or ten episodes. She was she finished watching it, and then she was. So when season two coming out? But it's too violent, but、uh, she enjoyed it. Parasite, yeah, I think she she enjoyed Parasite. So, if it was inspired by your mom, what what was the next step? You were at AFI when you started writing it. Yeah, so <clears throat> in our second year, we have to work on our feature scripts. So this was one of the script that I developed, and.、Um, It took about five years, just writing it, developing it,、um, and really getting the script to a tight spot because it's it's also kind of expensive to shoot in Korea, and for a first-time filmmaker like myself, it was hard to raise the funds necessary to make a film of a certain production value and all of that. But、um, I think writing it for a big part, I think the challenge was trying to keep it. Personal, but also keeping a distance from it,、um, and also just very much is inspired by my mom. But this is also a woman who is a character who is inspired by a lot of women around me, a lot of women of a certain age.、Um, so a lot of times when I work with my team, we would, I would always go back to what would your mom do? Would she? What would she wear? What would she? How would she behave? Or what? What does she think? So. In some ways, I think we incorporated a lot of、um, the mothers in my 
my team's lives into this character. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think everybody knows aunties. Yes. Um, so, I mean, did did the idea of taking a trip to Korea and all of that, did that come early on? Yeah. I mean, it was very much so if, when I think about whether my mom would travel on her own by herself. So it started from there. Um, I don't think she would. Even now, I don't think she would go somewhere by herself. Um, she would join a group tour. That, that's what she would do. So for the script, um, to write the first draft, I submitted the treatment to a film lab in Singapore. And then I um, won a top prize. I think I won like $5,000 or something. I used the money and I joined a group tour of a Juma group tour. So it was like a tour of at least 20 aunties from Singapore and me and <laughs> trying to kind of convince them that I'm not here on a research. I'm, you know, and then they would ask, why are you here by yourself? Oh, um, my mom was supposed to come and then she couldn't make it. I, I lied and then so then they were, do you have a girlfriend? Do, do, you know, do you, do, what do you do? Like, do you want to meet my daughter? Or, you know, um, all these things. But then you see the dynamics of these women. Um, but also I wanted to see Korea for the first time through the lens of a tourist. Um, so that was my first trip to Korea. And then subsequently I did a few, a few research trips. So did you get a lot of stuff that was vital to the film from that trip? Yeah, I think a lot of it was understanding um, the cultural nuances of, of, um, of Korea. Because I'm not Korean, so to write certain scenes that are essentially very Korean, I needed a lot of research. So talking to a lot of my friends and Obviously, a lot of Korean films that I've watched, a lot of Korean drama, and eventually the team that I work with, um, the Korean team that I worked with, were very helpful in making sure that, because um, I'm gonna have blind spots, cultural blind spots, um, even even though it's you know different parts of Asia, but some things are very nuanced. So I want to make sure that I was respectful to those things, and make sure that it makes sense to Koreans. So when we premiered in Busan this year, Busan International Film Festival, I wasn't sure if some of these things would, would fly over with the audience in Korea, but it's, it seems like it was okay. <laughs> so. so when you're trying to raise money to actually make this, I mean, you know, obviously if you were trying to sell a movie in the United States, saying, okay, the hero is a middle-aged woman is not a way to get studios to, to start throwing money at you. Um, I mean, was that a difficulty for you? Yeah, I mean, f for a big part of it was the fact that I've had studio execs, even when I was here, um, and I met a studio executives here, um, they would go like, oh, um, why don't you set the film in China? and you have a mainland Chinese auntie instead of a Singaporean auntie, because we don't, it's a bigger market, or it's, it's, we don't know anyone from Singapore. Um, so there was a lot of fighting towards that, even in Asia. Um, but also, if I've had film execs who would say, no one wants to watch a film of a middle-aged woman. And, and you hear things like that that makes it, and I'm gonna even, I wanna make it even more now, you know? Um, <clears throat> it was hard also because I'm a first-time feature director, so it was hard to convince people that I could make a film like that. And, and also, I think a lot of it was, it's not been done before in some ways in Asia, at least in Singapore at least. Uh, Singapore, South Korean co-production. And South Korea um, cinema, in, in many ways, they don't need co-production. Um, to make films, they, they, they are an ecosystem on their own. So there weren't a lot of incentives for them to want to do a co-production with another country. So we were doing a lot of things that were done on, you know, on tested waters. We, we got grants from the Korean Film Council. 
um, when they wanted to start co-producing with another country in ASEAN country, country, Southeast Asian countries. So they set up this grant and we were the first to get that grant and when we, because it's the first time they, they did it, we asked for more tax incentives because they're like, oh, why don't 20%, why don't you do 25%? And so things like that, trying to convince them that we could get this done and it, could, it can work and that you will want to watch this middle-aged woman, this auntie, you know, get her life back, get her groove back, you know. So how, how hard was, was the casting? I mean, you obviously found absolutely wonderful performances at the, at the center of this. Um, so mm. so um, Hong Hui Fang, who plays the auntie, so she is a veteran TV actress from Singapore. She is someone that I grew up watching on television, but she has only played supporting roles. She has never been the lead. So when I auditioned her, it was pretty much her, we, we, she read two scenes. She read the scene where she had to talk to her son and her son came out to her. And then I sent, I, like, I mean, I had chills watching it. And then I sent the script back to her and said, you go, why don't you read it? And then we'll talk in two weeks. She came back and she was like smiling at me and she said, I have no idea I'm the lead. I'm in every scene. I thought I was just playing like the mom of some guy. I'm like, no, the film is called Ajuma. What do you think it's, what do you think it means? And so it was a role and she would tell me like, I've never had an offer like that. I've never played um, a leading, a leading role. And it's so hard to play even in Singapore where to, um, there, there are roles, there are not a lot of roles for women of a certain age just even to be a lead role. Um, so we found her and then in, in Korea, we worked with a casting director, but also I think my mom had a say in a lot of the casting. So, you know, like I, I would do my homework and then I would show her, what do you think, this guy? I said, yeah, I like him, I've seen him before, he's good. If you use him, your film will do well, <laughs> you know. So then I have to go to my casting director and then I, you know, Recommend, you know, give his my suggestions, and so Mr. Jong Dong Wan, who plays the older guy, so he was the first Korean actor we cast. Um, he is a veteran actor, amazing actor from Korea. Um, have done stage, film, um, t television. Um, we couldn't audition him because usually actors of a certain age, you 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 don't audition them, you offer them the role. So I just, you know, offered him the role and he said yes. Um, Kang hyung so who plays the tour guide. So he was hard to find because I needed a Korean actor who can speak Mandarin. And that's, that's not easy. Um, we managed to get him. Um, he lived in China for a few years. But he's also a really good actor. But also, for me, he's too good looking. And I said that to him when I first met him. I'm, I was just sort of like, you look unreal. You're... Everything is so sculpted, and the character is supposed to be a little more down to earth and you know scruffy. And so he put on some weight. He made the character his own. Um, I told he decided that the actor character is going to be a man child, um, someone with a lot of you know can deal with his responsibility of being a young dad. So he made it his own. I think it it worked. Um, Yo Jinggu, who plays the the actor in the drama. So he's a huge, um, well, he's a huge Korean actor. He's a child, he was a child actor and he grew up to become, you know, very established. So he was hard to get and expensive, but um, he worked with Mr. Jong in a Korean drama a few years ago. So he thought he was in it because Mr. Jong was in it, but um, it turned out it, it, it it sort of worked. Um, yeah, we were very lucky to have these actors with us. So, so you created your own Korean drama to yeah. um, for her to watch. Yeah, someone in where was I? I was in Taiwan, I think. Someone thought it was an actual Korean drama, and it's like I, I'm, I'm a Yoo Jin Gu fan. I thought I've seen every of his drama, but I don't. I can't find it anywhere. I'm like, no, it's not real. I wrote it. Um, and 
so that was fun. It was also my secret p pitch to co Korean TV execs, like, hey, if you ever need a new Korean drama writer and director, I'm here. Um, no, so that was, that was uh, a, a very typical Korean drama that my mom loves watching. It's always about, you know, this guy who grew up abandoned by his birth parents and then, and then growing up, he realized he has to find his real dad or mom. And it's always that kind of trope. My mom has seen like, I don't know how many dramas with the same storyline. Yeah, so it's a very typical trope in Korean drama. Was it, was it fun to create one? Oh yeah, um, we also shot it like a Korean drama. So um, I think we could go ham with like the dialogue can be a lot, a lot, you know, can be cheesy, it can be, the acting is a little bit more heightened, you know, um, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but the actors do, the actors that, you know, even Yo Jin Gu, who plays a character in this drama, he would ask serious questions about the character in the drama, like it's an actual drama, and I have to remind myself, like, wait, we're, this is, I have to think like it's an actual drama. I have to talk to the actors, like the motivation about the characters, like, yeah, your mom, you know, that's not your real mom. So you've got to think about that. And so it, 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 it was fun. It was, it was fun creating that. Um, it's a little different from the rest of the film. But also because the rest of the film has a bit of that Korean drama tone to it. So I think the audience are allowed to suspend their disbelief um, in the plot and just go along with it. So it has a little bit of that. Yeah. I mean, obviously at the center of the film, there's this you know, relationship between two people who don't speak each other's language. How, how is your Korean? And yeah, I can't, I can't speak Korean at all. I, 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 for a few years before, I shot, I, I, I learned Korean, but at a certain age, it's, it's just impossible to learn a new language. <laughs> um, so I relied very heavily on my translator, who was with us, with me throughout the film. Uh, she's a Singaporean actress who lives in Korea. Um, so she speaks English, Singlish, Korean, Mandarin. So. I needed someone next to me who could, you know, talk to the actors in a way that an actors would understand. Um, so that was very helpful. Um, but I, yeah, I, the, the Korean I know would be uh, which is at the end of the day, when you finish shooting, you thank everyone. So you think, thank you for your hard work. So that's all I know how to say. I, I know how to say safe, uh, can I have one? Safety, anjampang. Anjampang, anyone speak Korean here? Anjampang is safety, one safety shot. So every time I say that, the Korean crew would laugh. But then you realize there is a universal language in filmmaking around the, anywhere you go, it's, it's, it's a similar language. Yeah. So did, did your two lead actors speak each other's language? No. So they don't speak, they speak very little English. In the first few days, we were, f we were shooting in a car, and it was excruciating just because it was so silent. And and then I, but I know they both play golf, so I would tell Miss, you know, tell them on the walkie-talkie like, "Hey, Mr. Zhang, Miss uh, Hui Fang plays golf, and Hui Fang, Miss, oh, Mr. Zhang plays golf. Can you please just talk?" You know, and I think golfing has some language that are quite similar, like handicap and and all that, so they sort of got to know each other. But also, over the period of filming, they, I think they start to build the chemistry, but miraculously, it's through this body language, which is interesting to watch, and, and just very minimal English. Um, so, yeah, like the fact that they don't speak a common language was, was surprising, but I think that was the whole point of the film, was that because they don't speak the same language, they can still understand each other. So you're from Singapore. You, were, you shot some of it in Singapore, but most of it was shot in Korea. So was your crew a mixture? Um, only, I only had two colleagues with me uh, from Singapore who 
flew with me to Korea. Um, I worked primarily with a Korean, entirely entirely Korean crew in, in, in Korea. And then my cinematographer came back to Singapore with me to prep. And then in Singapore, we, we had a all Singaporean crew. And um, it's, it's really fascinating to work in Korea as a first time filmmaker from Singapore and see the kind of film ecosystem that they have, the filmmaking ecosystem that they have, um, the way they think, the way they look at literature, the way they think of film, the way they think of acting, everything is so measured and so, there's so much depth to it. And, and I think it really was one of the reasons why, for me, um, we could make a film like that, that had a lot of, just a lot of depth um, from the actors, I think. The way they think about the, the roles was, was, was very fascinating. So, so for you, shooting this, I mean, what were, what were the biggest challenges? What were the things that you felt like you, know, you had to try work hardest to overcome? I think the self-doubt, probably, for me. I thought the language would be, language, yes, for sure. Because I wanted to make sure that we don't, um, I, w I needed to have a consistent flow of communication because loss in translation is going to happen. I want to minimize that. But I think it, it's a lot of it is the first, the first time filmmaker making your first feature, you don't know whether, should I take my, you know, am I taking myself too seriously or do I, you know, and to shoot a film during the pandemic, we shot the film in January. Um, so reminding myself that, you know, to just even shoot a film is a privilege. Um, not a, I have friends who lost their jobs um, during the pandemic. A lot of my film crew friends who couldn't get work and then they're doing delivery and doing all sorts of things. So when we filmed in Singapore to see them working again and to remind ourselves that, hey, we're making films. You know, it's a, this, is, this is a privilege, this is a, and I think for me it's also wanting to make sure that we have fun making it, you know? So I hope I went in with a lot of positive energy that you can see in the film, you can feel it in the film. And my whole point was just to make sure that the audience watched the film and they can feel the love and sincerity that we've put into it. Um, but I think also from my mom, in, in some small ways. Um, I think I tell myself, like, oh, you, if you have a chance to make your first feature, make one that your mom would like. And then after that, you can make whatever you want, you know? So, um, yeah. I, mean, I, I do feel like one of the beautiful things about this film is that even when you're dealing with really serious subjects, there's such a light touch to it. I mean, it feels, you know, it feels very light on its feet and, and not easy going because it gets into tough areas, but it does, it does have that, that lightness. How, how do you create that? <clears throat> I think one of it is this idea of this woman who finds escape in Korean drama. Um, I think it's the same here where um, you, you f sometimes find escape in telenovelas or soap operas. And there's something fun about that. But, but yet, at the same time, it's melodramatic. It's, it's, it's all of that. But I think through melodrama, you can st still find some emotional truth to it. And in the same way, that's how she understands her own emotions about you know, her son um, coming out and her son leaving through a drama that she's been watching. So she watched it, and then she, you know, the over-the-topness of it, she still understands that there is something quite deep emotionally for her to, uh, you know, to, to um, process. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the scene where her son comes out at, at, at the end, I mean, obviously there have been hints of that earlier in the film, but it hasn't been a central line in her, in her story. Was it important that that come in at that point in the film? Yeah, I mean, so Singapore is a fairly conservative country. Um, it's only this year that we um, 
repealed a penal code that decriminalized gay men from having sex. And this was just repealed this year. Um, so for me to make a film with a theme like that, it's very small. I remember when I applied for a grant in Singapore, um, they would ask me, oh, what, does the son need, need to be gay? Do you need that? And I go like, wait, you're, you're focusing on that? The story is about her. What's it going to do with him? And I think it's important to, f to feature that because it, it's important to see how she deals with it. So the film is, was released in Singapore in October. We have a rating of NC-16 because of this, because of this scene. Um, and then I, I've had people who watch it and go like, wait, why is it NC-16? And, and so, and I have to explain this. It, it's, it's about a mother's acceptance or not, if you, if you see it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different way, but of her son. Of, and this, this part is just a part of her journey that she has to be the, discover for herself. Um, and, and you can, you know, argue, maybe it's not about the son coming out, it's about the son leaving, leaving her. It, it, so it's up to you to see how you want to deal with you, how to read the film. But it was important for me for her to be, um, to face with this idea that, her, that she knows her son is gay the entire time, is how the son wants to come out to her and how she deals with it. And then deciding that she still wants to have a life of her own, just as much as her son wants to have a life of his own. Before I, I open it to audience questions, I do have to ask you, you know, tell us what it was like the first time you showed this to your mom when it was finished. Um, so she saw the film with the rest of the audience in Singapore when we had our premiere. And, and I've been asked that many times. Like, oh, did your mom react? Um, the first time she watched, finished watching, she, I, saw, I saw her at the theater. She was, she, her eyes were a little red. Um, and then when I saw her at home, I was like, oh, so what did you think? Did you like it? She said, yeah, it's a, it's a little short. I enjoyed it. And then she paused for a while, and then she goes like, why is this woman so sad? And, and I kind of, it, it kind of broke my heart a little bit, because um, is, that, is that what you think? I'm like, no, well, I have to watch it again. So then she, the next time she watched, she brought her line dancing friends with her, like 20, 20 of them. And they watched, she watched, she's seen it like four times now. And and then she, I was on a mag, on a, I was a cover on a magazine. She brought the magazine cover to her exercise friends. She was like, "This is my son," and she told me that. And then, and then she said, and then my friends asked, like, "Oh, you're, do you have a girlfriend? You're so handsome. Do you have a girlfriend?" And I said, "I don't know what to say." <laughs> so I, you know, everything I have to say to my mom, I've said it in the film. Do we have any? Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, she was just asking how he went into building the different energy in each of the different, where Singapore has a different energy than Korea, and how did he build the, um, you know, the different energy in the different locations? Um, so Singapore is primarily a very tropical city, island, island state, um, very multiracial, and we don't experience anything other than summer. So I wanted to create this color, this world where everything is just very lush, very green, very, just very saturated and just a lot of warmth. Um, and then transporting you right into Korea where everything is just a little bit more romantic, more desaturated and more, um, has a tone of the Korean drama that you are familiar with, but also there is a bit of reality to it. Um, and and so when the first time when she sees, you know, snowfall, it's, it's a very real feeling, I think, for her uh, to be of a certain age and you feel like you're a child again, watch, you know, experiencing snow. So I think it was going through all of that um, from 
taking you from summer right into the harshness of winter, and then through colors and through music as well, um, but also through the lens of this woman, this, this Singaporean woman, this auntie who is experiencing Korea for the first time. Um, like I, maybe for a lot of audience also who have never been to Korea might feel the same way. Right here. Yes. Thank you. Um, the, the question for those of you in the back was just asking him to talk about the sense of humor in the film, and was it influenced by Italian movies or European movies? Amodovar is my cinematic idol. Um, uh, like, I, I look up to him a lot. I'm not sure if I might have a bit of that influence in the film, the Korean Asian version, maybe. Um, I do see the sense of humor as a bit more, um, there is comedy in the reality of life, I think, rather than trying to make it slapstick. So a lot of the comedy comes from this, this uh, living, you know, um, this idea of living, this slice of life, and there is humor in that. Um, so, but there are certain influences uh, I've had with when I was writing the film and making the film. Um, there's a Chilean film, Gloria, uh, Sebastian Leo, that I love. Um, also about a coming of age, late coming of age film of a and woman. an American remake. I, I, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> to call it Gloria, I, well, it's very different, very different, yeah. Um, a bit of Amadova. There's certain film, certain Amadova films I watch even without, you know, making this film. I rewatch it again just because it, it sometimes restarts certain writing process for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right here. Hi. Um, you, this, I love your film, by the way. This very old film is coming out. She's. Asking if, if any of the moments between the two lead characters were improvised, or how did they come about? Um, so one of my favorite scene in the film is when she says goodbye to him in the car. Um, there are a few moments where, it, it, it's my favorite because of the way they work together. It's been like weeks of working together, and that when we filmed that scene, it was maybe two, three weeks into filming, and we worked on it, we rehearsed it, and then we talked about it. And then he added a few lines, and usually when he add lines, because I don't understand Korean, so the translator would tell me like, he wants to add this line, is it okay? And I, they translated it, and I said, oh yeah, it's, it's funny, yeah, let's use that. But she doesn't understand anything, so I was like, oh, don't, don't tell her. And, and so she, only, she was just kind of like, going by cue of the script, so, so when he, so she kind of like, I think she kind of went like, did, she, did he add a line? Not sure, but I can, but she just went along with it. So she, I think it just felt a flow really nicely, I think. So they would also do things as actors. They would tell, he would tell her like, you, slow. And then, you know, and then she would get it. Like, oh, slow down my pace. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. And so there are a lot of things they, they honestly, genuinely don't, for her, she doesn't understand what's going on. But I think after filming it, and he explained like his process, and then she got it. So that happened a few times. Like, she, like um, So when he said, I want to live, so that was improvised. And then when she said, I don't understand, but yeah, the, she improvised that also. Yeah. Okay, do we have one more here? We'll go back to where we started. The question is, as a Singaporean filmmaker, are there storytelling sensibilities that are different from American storytelling sensibilities? The sensitivity of Singaporean filmmakers in the audience. Um, I'm, all, I'm also educated in AFI, so I feel like I have American sensibilities that I can't run away from. But Singaporean, I, I realized this when I was at AFI, when I started making shorts at AFI. I always get, I've always been told, like, um, 
you, you can you not be so slow with the way you reveal certain things like you're taking your time with it i'm like yeah why not? so i do think there are certain sensibilities that are more i don't know if it's like a pacing thing or not straightforward not as straightforward as, as american film sensibilities but I, I guess I'm trying to marry both. But I don't think we have a specific uh, sensibility. I don't, I don't know, I don't think so. Or at least not, we don't have that many films to establish that yet. Well, thank you for, for showing us your sensibilities wherever they come from. And thank you. Thanks.